Mais pas idiot, putain. The extensive list of Otome titles continues to grow. From action thrillers, public domain casts, time travel to non-sequential amnesia and more. So what could possibly be next? Well, here we are with a mafia themed thriller, Pio Fiore Fated Memories, which has made its way to the Nintendo Switch in the West. With it, we get some great looking anime boys and a decent opening, but somewhere along the way, romance can't seem to hold together this gangster story. The year is 1925. The place is a city in Italy on the eastern coastline named Bologna. Bologna is a tourist destination, a large trading outpost, and as such is known as the back door to Europe. However, under the surface, the place is in perpetual conflict, shrouded in violence, and run by all sorts of mafia dens. There are three big groups, the first being the Falzone family, who have the control of most of the town and have been there the longest. They are led by Dante Falzone, who has only recently taken over after his father's sudden death, the former boss. Only Italians may join their ranks, and only those with Falzone blood will have any sway in their operations. The next mob group is the Visconti family. They are an offshoot of the Falzone family that rebelled against their bloodline rules, and are led by Gilbert Redford, who seems to have bottomless pockets and an incredible knack for business. The last is the Lao Shu. They're a Chinese mafia band made up of immigrants who they also take advantage of. They receive significant funding from mainland China, and their leader is shrouded in mystery. Players take the viewpoint of Liliana Lily Adornato, an orphan girl who has lived in the church her whole life with her childhood friend Elena. One day when the two are going out for church supplies, they're attacked by thugs from the Lao Shu before a mysterious hooded man intervenes to rescue them but not before Elena ends up needing to be hospitalized. With a turf war on the horizon and fears that the thugs will be back to finish the job, the Falzone family offers them protection and refuge, but they seem to have some ulterior motives. Pio Fiore has a lot of background information that is just thrown at you from right out the gate. Still, you don't really need to worry about this narrative being too convoluted. The title repeatedly reinforces all the basic facts, making it easy to pick up what's going on, especially since whenever the game's story wants to get complicated, it provides you with a little meanwhile feature. If you choose to follow the prompt for this nifty little thing, pulls perspective away from Liliana to show you what else is happening. It's got a very stylistic transition and I love it. The UI in Pio Fiore is really nice and clean, especially at the beginning of the game with like the extra menus. The text boxes tell you that this is clearly the same engine as all the other Automate titles, but it adds enough flourish to make it stand out. Really, the presentation of Pio Fiore doesn't fall much short of immaculate. The CGs are very well drawn, the cast is filled with incredibly stylish looking characters, and the film reel transitions are fantastic. The audio is great too, with several standout songs as well as some kick-ass background tracks. Unfortunately, the rest of the game is rather lacking. The stylish characters really don't have stylish writing to back it up, and things start to fall apart from that. If you're a fan of playing a damsel role in distress, then Liliana is the heroine for you. But if you'd like your protagonist to have a sense of agency, a proper impact on the plot, or development at all, then this is not what you're looking for. Liliana is incredibly bland, boring, and has nothing going for her. That magical birthmark she has might hint at something greater, has a lengthy resolution, and is almost even forgotten about by the plot. Her love interests aren't much better, as they're the ones responsible for either kidnapping or holding her hostage for such long periods of the game, which prevents her from doing anything. It really feels like the writers had no idea where they were going with the overall story, because the actions of the cast vary wildly in character, depending on the route. Used merely is nothing more than malleable pieces to have some sort of feasible story. A character who seemed perfectly fine in their route, might be out to kill, or do much worse, to Liliana in another character's route with no reason for the action. This occurs to everyone bar Gilbert, who is easily the GOAT during this story because he's a great guy 24-7 no matter which route you're on. It becomes clear though that a lot of this story's darker plot points are dark for the sake of being dark when you take a look at the epilogues. 
These are short stories that occur after both the good and bad ends of each route, and they play out the angst and creepy factors for all their worth in the bad endings. Hi, please. Pio Fiore Fated Memories is a game that drips in style and premise, but unfortunately doesn't really know what to do with it, so it ends up making base appeals to those who like dark, edgy, and more morally questionable entertainment. If you liked the developer's most recent Western releases, you'd be disappointed with the lack of plot in this mafia narrative. But if you were more into, say, Amnesia, this might be up your alley. Noisy Pixel is giving Pio Fiore Fated Memories a 6.5 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. Noisy Pixel is a group dedicated to bringing you guys the best news, reviews, previews, and more. Please stick around and, you know, subscribe. Read the review on the site at noisypixel.net and check out our podcast, which is somewhere. Give me some good stuff with the de detective characters if you can. I'm. This game has a detective and he just doesn't get used. He. It's like. He even does all the exposition and they don't use them. It's, it's, come on, like what a wasted opportunity. I should have put that in the actual review. That's a really good fact. <laughs>